It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, gon' show up, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Joining us on our second episode of Candy Fresh. I'm your host, Sonny. And I'm Miss Britt. On tonight's show, we have a lot of special guests coming through. Up first, we have trans woman of color, this amazing Queen Bia Gomez, coming in to talk about her work in radio, as well as poet, actress, and playwright, Sign Up for Looks Longside. We also have joining us this evening a woman who is called a runway goddess, Miss Mimi Wynn, mm -hmm. and a recording artist named Chris Lawrence. Now, DJ Keezy is holding it down on the ones and twos behind us, and she's going to be spinning all night, so if any of you in the audience or even you at home get the spirit to get up and dance, go ahead and do that, because she's going to be keeping it sweet for us with music all night. And of course, we have our Candy Fresh dancers, so by all means, get up and dance with them. And we also wanted to make sure that you give yourself a round of applause for coming out to jo for yeah. joining us on our second episode, y'all. Yeah. talk show that talks back to you. So of course we have our third co-host who's going to be in the audience, Miss B. Perella, who's going to be holding it down, asking you all in the audience questions about how do you keep things fresh and how do you keep things sweet. So what we're going to do right now is kick it on back to her. Don't go anywhere though because this is Candy, Candy Fresh. Peace. Thanks for watching Candy Fresh. My name is Felicia P. And with me today I have two dope gentlemen. I have Mr. Gerald Bruington, and then I also have Mr. Benedict Frank. And these gentlemen are cooking up something really sweet at their new restaurant, Funky Grits. Can you tell me a little bit about Funky Grits? Absolutely. Thank you for having us, everybody. My name is Jared Bruington. I'm one of the founders of Funky Grits. Funky Grits is a fast, casual diner concept that's opening up this winter in South Minneapolis, uptown. Uh, Funky Grits uh, model is uh, our ambiance is 50s through 70s, soul and rare funk cuts, and we're talking about the B-sides, 45s. That's the ambiance of our backdrop, and we're serving up uh, soul-inspired, uh, chef-driven, always funky uh, meals to everyone. It's affordable, it's high-quality ingredients, and we're really taking this outside by storm. We want to thank all the press that we've received over the last few weeks with the City Pages, Pioneer Press, and the Journal. Uh, we're coming for you guys, and we're gonna show you what real good southern inspired food's all about. Well, I bet you the south side of Minneapolis is looking forward to some good eating. So tell me, when will Funky Grits be open? When can we come and have a little taste? Well, as my partner Jared said, uh, we're looking towards winter. It is the restaurant industry, so uh, I don't know if uh, those of you who are familiar with it, it's always uh, delays and whatnot that come up. But, uh, you know, barring any sort of uh, huge catastrophes, we're looking to be open uh, winter time, early springtime. Uh, yeah, I mean, we want to get it open as soon as possible for everybody and start super serving up our uh, our uh, unique take on Southern food, so. Okay, awesome. Well, tell me one more thing, one more question, fellas. Tell me what's sweet on the menu. Well, that one thing that everyone's going to be tripping about, for one, this title track, the Funky Grits, which is uh, coarse brown yellow grits uh, with um, uh, blue cheese with uh, crawfish cakes, house-made boudin sausage, and uh, chipotle remoulade, and what's going to also turn people is the perlo, which is the south take on chicken and rice. We're going to really turn it out, and you guys are going to see the home of the perlo and the home of the funky grits. It's going to be a fantastic event. Uh, January is what we're looking at. Uh, we got a special location announcement coming in the next few weeks, so check us out on our Funky Grits Facebook page or Real Funky Grits on Twitter. Thank you and welcome back to Kansas. 
Community Fresh. With me right now, I have a radio host on Fresh Food, curator of KFEI's International Women's Day, and who was recently featured on the cover of City Pages. Please welcome Quinn Via Gomez. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Quinn, uh, we all know you as Quinn, but some of us know you as Shimmer as well, and it's clear that you are amazing in this outfit. Right, yeah. Thank you. term amazing what does that mean well um as you know i'm a trans woman of color and so a long time ago you know how a lot of the trans women come up with names like diamonds and prada well shimmer because i love glitter and glamour i thought shimmer was great so i thought it was fabulous at first i was going to pick sequin but then that would have been too cheesy so i picked shimmer and it's stuck ever since and she looks amazing again doesn't she host on Fresh Fruit. Tell us about your show. When can people listen? What's it all about? Yes, so currently I'm a co-host on KFBI Radio, a program called Fresh Fruit. And Fresh Fruit is a program that airs every second Thursday of the month. And I co-host alongside Roxanne Anderson, who is the host of the program, also in um, with Rare Productions. And the premises of our program is to focus on um, the LGBT community, queer artists of color, and trans people of color. Excellent, excellent. And with Roxanne, your co-host, you also work uh, with them on Rare Productions. So what is Rare Productions? What do you guys do? Rare Productions is an entertainment and arts and media um, company. And what we do is, is we bring LGBT artists trans artists and people of color artists um, and we bring them to like events and showcase their talent um, and I've done some events with Roxanne such as we um, currently are going to be having an event coming up next month and we have artists such as Kevin Chaos Moore, we have Lil One who is a, um, a trans artist who is a female to male trans artist and we also have um, Quentin Adams and so many more artists on the, on the uh, Rare Productions label. Definitely. So we'll make sure that we give all you guys listening at the audience. And for those of you viewing at home, we'll make sure that we give you guys the information so you can check those events out. But tell us, you've been providing platforms for queer artists, for trans artists, and you are a Latina woman, you are a trans woman as well. Um, how is it that you've been able to kind of make your way through the entertainment industry, through the radio industry, being a minority, someone who doesn't um, maybe have the same identification as other people in your field? Um, well, I think for me, I think being someone who is transgender, I think it's a, it's a lifestyle that's really tough. It's a struggle, um, you know, a lot of bullying, a lot of, you go through so much hate and adversity, but I think I'm being so strong. And I think what I've been doing this last year with, for the community has been such a great honor. Um, being in radio broadcasting, you don't see a lot of trans people doing that. Also, you know, just kind of just living my dream of being out there and showcasing and also hosting um, local um, events in the Twin Cities. And I want to be a voice for the LGBT community, so I'm so grateful. Please make some noise for me right now. extremely important but there is one trans person who's been getting a lot of love in the media which I think is a great thing for the most part but when most people transition they don't get to be automatically on the cover of Vanity Fair or to get a reality show so what has it meant for you as a trans woman of color since Caitlyn Jenner has emerged as her new identity? Well, I am local um, and so you know I'm not famous and rich like Caitlyn Jenner is. Yes, you are. Um, but I think, you know, I really want people to understand that trans people, trans men and trans women, we're human beings. We don't wake up every day with a glam squad. We don't have our hair done, our makeup done, you know, and we live our life with daily struggles and we have our imperfections. And also in the community, healthcare is a really big struggle for trans people. You know, a lot of healthcare providers do not give us access to hormones and other programs and stuff like that. So for me, my story is, is I'm not on hormones. I'm just, you know, a trans woman. I've been living my life this way for so long. And so I want to start that journey. And it's just been kind of a tough road for me. So I really want everyone to know that we do have our struggles. And we may not be at the level that Caitlyn Jenner is, but I feel what I'm doing in the community is great. So I am, you know, the shimmer of the Twin Cities. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
your influences that have really inspired you to be authentic to who you are, even though you know you don't have the reality show to walk into or the glam squad just waiting on you daily? What motivates you and who motivates you to keep doing what you do? Uh, what motivates me is music. Um, I love music. Um, I love radio. Um, I think I have this eloquent way of speaking. Um, I also, my biggest inspirations, I have two. My first is my best friend, Jonathan Gibson, who I've known for over 20 years, and he's been the biggest, brightest light in my life, and he's been there for me throughout my dark days, my happy days, and he's my biggest supporter. Um, also, I have to say Roxanne Anderson, because in radio broadcasting, Roxanne is the only person who's never betrayed me, who's never beat around the bush, who took me under their wing and has really molded me as someone who wants to be in radio. And so when I went on to Fresh Fruit and sat in with Roxanne, it's just been a uh, set staple ever since. So I'm so grateful for both of them. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, it's amazing that you have those pillars within your community that are going to show you love and that you can have a platform in which you can give other artists love and make sure that they have access to raise their voices and really raise awareness of other issues. And I think that's a beautiful, amazing thing. But as you said, being a trans woman of color hasn't been an easy journey, yet you're so sweet, so humble, so amazing. Thank you. How do you keep it all together? How, what do you do to keep life sweet? Um, I think it's just, you know, I was always raised with self-respect. I think that's just the way to go about, treat everyone um, with kindness. Also, I work in HR for Walmart, and I think that, you know, my associates really respect me as a human being. They don't look at me based on my gender. They respect me as Quinn, and I love that. And I think it's just, you know, music and, you know, because I love to look glamorous with glitter is what really keeps me excited. Okay, well, you do it. Well, we need to tell people how can they stay in contact with you and find out more about the events that you're doing, hear you on the radio, what's the best way to reach you? Yes, so um, you can find me on Facebook, Quinn Villa Gomez, also on Twitter at uh, Quinn Villa Gomez, and also on Instagram, uh, ShimmerGlitz13. And, uh, um, and actually, um, and also, don't forget to check out Fresh Fruit on KFAI every second Thursday of the month um, with Rare Productions, hosted by Roxanne Anderson, 90.3 FM in Minneapolis and 106.7 in St. Paul. And then also, um, we're having a big event next month at Kathy's Outside the Exchange. It's going to be black, brown, and queer all over. Okay. Holla, and I'm emceeing that. Okay. And um, we have such an sh amazing lineup of amazing artists. We definitely look forward to seeing you at all of those events, and you can listen to Quinn online at kfai.org slash fresh fruit. But make sure you stay tuned, because we got a whole lot more sweetness for you right here on Candy Fresh. partner she's um her name is charita maz she, some of you probably know her from modeling here she's very well known um right now she couldn't be here because she's in arizona um that's where she lives now so i'm just doing everything here and she's doing everything over there okay so take turn doing stuff pretty much okay yeah so for people who like like me because i'm just getting into the fashion yeah stuff okay so for those of us who are not fashion savvy what's the difference between uh, a head fashion or a, a head designer and a stylist. What's the difference between the two? Um, a designer is the one that create the clothes. Okay. Um, 
a stylist is the one that helps designer, you know, make the clothes more beautiful. Like put, like put them on the model? Yes, put, put them on the model, what go good with the clothes, and, you know, accessory-wise, makeup, hair, all that stuff. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Okay. So, you gonna hook me up with your people, right? Yeah, with you. <laughs> okay. All right, so, uh, I like to keep my interviews sweet and simple. I, I want to do past, present, and future. So, for the past, how did you know that design and the fashion world, because I heard it's pretty cutthroat, what made you say, you know what, this is what I want to do? Um, well, the past, I actually stumbled into um, designing clothes because I was known for producing big events and fashion shows. I've been sewing since I was six years old, and i um, pretty much just whipped the outfit when I go out to event. Long story short, my friends just pretty much, you know, put my name out there mm -hmm. in this fashion show because they short designer, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to jeopardize my other business, which is LPL Projects mm -hmm. production. Um, so, you know, I didn't want to jeopardize that, so I just whipped the outfit for the shows, and then ever since then I end up, you know, doing it, yeah. Okay. It's been like almost two years now. Okay. Yeah. How, how would somebody go into um, building their own, something that's for them, that, that's speaking to their personal brand of fashion? Okay, let's just say, I'll give you a sample. Um, if I go in there and I saw Versace dress that I like, and I thought, oh, I want to make something like that. And then I want to put something my, you know, personal style. Okay. See me, I like very fitted and curvy clothes. Mm -hmm. So like, I like to throw, I'm very detailed, so I like to throw little details just to like get the one with the curve. All right, Mimi, so I, I was told that you brought some models here today and some pieces, or just one model? Just one model, okay. the lovely Stephanie. Okay, all right, well, Stephanie, come on out. Let's see what you got. <laughs> All right, do your, do your hip fashion designer thing. Go ahead and explain us what's going on here. Um, this is Mita Couture for 2015 this year collection for a fashion shows um, that coming up, but I already used it, so I'll make some nails. But, uh, um, so pretty much is lace, stretchy. Um, all this flower here is hand cut and hand sewn, and it took me about almost two days. So the whole entire dress just for the flowers was two days. Yeah. So um, cause it's two different fabric. The top one is um is lace, and the bottom one is the flower actually from the you know the, the stretchy lace fabric. So I have to cut two different type of fabric and put them on top of each other. It's a handful. Long story short, you know I have some friends, my daughter, everybody pretty much helped cut the flowers. Um, it took three days for this dress to be done. Um, That's pretty give short her, give everybody a little spin, Stephanie. So yeah, train. got a little train right here yeah. going on. Um, very dramatic. Um, so this is one of my couture dresses. So I we make ready to wear clothes and couture dresses. Um, pretty much anything and everything. Yeah. Right. So how can people contact you if they want to find out? How to get a hold of you if you can make any couture dresses? Um, the best way to contact me is uh, my Facebook, Mimi Nguyen or Mita, M-I-T-A. Um, if not, follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Any last words you want to throw in there? Um, well, thank you for having me here. Um, call me about the stylist. Oh, well, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming out. Yeah. Give her a round of applause. What's up? That was the flyest, sweetest audience in the Twin Cities. And this is Candy Fresh. My name is Felicia P. And I have with me Mr. Michael 57. 57! All right. <laughs> <laughs> a local artist. And he's going to tell us a little bit about his up and coming project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. I'm Mike Hill 57. I have an independent label called GPS. That's Good Park and Space Publishing because I'm always in the front and everybody else in the back. So I'm taking the parking spot. And um, yeah, I got a um, new single coming out called I Can Love You featuring 12G and uh, Remedy. Um, yeah, it's something for the ladies, something nice and slow you can groove to for the summertime, get your cuddle on with your lady, you know? All right, that sounds nice and sweet. Can you just kick for us just a sweet little lyric, um, one line from off of that song for us? Um, I just kick this one, I'll be like, I'm the best rapper alive, so somebody lied, or little Wayne died. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was Michael 57, and this is Kenny Fresh.
much. I have another amazing guest with me today. This is Saimukta Muks Vamse. This is a playwright, actress, and performing artist who recently did a play at Intermedia Arts that sold out every single night. They had me rolling on the floor laughing at one point. It was absolutely amazing, and I can't wait to tell you more about it. But first, can the Candy Crush audience welcome Muks to the stage, please? <laughs> I'm doing very well now that I had two drinks in. Well, we knew it. Oh, amen. Listen, Jesus turned water to wine, so we was just in here feeling good, having a good time. That's what it's all about. So tell us, because you felt really good in the Mong Lao Friendship Play. Tell us, I know you wrote it and you starred in it, but for those who didn't get to see it because it did sell out, what is it? So the Mong Lao Friendship Play, or Lao Mong Friendship Play, is... Um, has been something that's been brewing for the last two years with my BFF, my real life BFF, Mei Liang. Um, we wanted to write it because she's ethnically Hmong and I'm ethnically Lao. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're kind of an odd couple um, because our communities have historically butted heads in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, being in Minnesota, you know, this year marks the 40th year of Hmong and Lao people in Minnesota. That's a big deal, make some noise for that. Woo! And we thought that there was this major disconnect that our communities don't um, gather together. We don't go to each other's events. We have this, um, we share the same language. We're both from Laos. We, we, we have um, similarities in culture, in food, you know, music and things like that. And so we wanted to write this play uh, based on our friendship. And just, I guess we have this naive outlook of maybe our play would bring our communities together. But really, thats I don't think that's going to happen. But hey, at least it's funny, I guess. <laughs> and um, so you started that with Mei Li Yang, who's your real life BFF. And how long did it take from concept until it made it to the stage for you all to put that together? So we actually received a Minnesota State Arts Board grant um, for arts access to develop this play and uh, to mount it. And so we started writing back in February and had to, we went on two separate writing retreats so that we could have concentrated focused time to work on the script. Mm -hmm. um, so we had two drafts. Uh, the second draft, we worked with our dramaturg and our director. Mm -hmm. And once we put, we started doing the scenes in rehearsals and for some reason, some of the scenes did not work out at all. It just, the way it was written, the way that we brought it on its feet did, did not work. So what we ended up doing was we did a lot of improv and devised, um, you know, he would give us scenarios and then we would act it out. So one of the scenarios that didn't make it into the, the final cut of the play was one where our director said to us, um, so how about you guys imagine that you get invited to a, um, a swingers party in the suburb and how would you react to that? And so we, we did that scene and it didn't, it didn't work for the, the whole play, so uh, the process has been fun, and we really um, embrace intentional hot messes. Yes. Even when they're not intentional, it works out just fine. So it's been a journey since the beginning of the year. I think that's really important that they said that they got a grant to help fund this project. I know a lot of artists feel frustrated because they have real authentic narratives, as the both of you did, but it seems like the only thing that the dominant mainstream wants to hear or that funders want to hear is a story that's already been told. So I think that's really encouraging, the fact that you all sought out alternative funding so you didn't have to go broke in the process and you were able to produce this amazing work of art that sold out. So congratulations again on that. But you also wrote another play called Kung Fu Sa Zombies versus cannibals. Yes. Tell me about that. So, Kung Fu Zombies versus Cannibals is probably um, the play that I'm most well known for nationally. Um, I really love science fiction and I love horror movies and I love kung fu and I love hip hop and, and conspiracy, the conspiracy theories. Like, I love all these things. And so, Kung Fu Zombies is like this combination of all these things that would be miscombinations, right? Um, but the play is really about. Um, the fact that Laos is the his most historically bombed country per capita in history. Mm -hmm. And this was because of the, uh, during the Vietnam War, the CIA had a, a carpet bombing campaign, which meant that um, they were unloading plane loads of bombs on, onto Laos. Um, that probably equals every minute, every eight minutes, um, all day, 24 hours a day, for like a 
period of nine years. So that's the equivalent of how many bombs they dropped on Laos. And I wanted to um, have the zombies be like these bombs that haven't detonated. Mm -hmm. And after so many years of being buried under the ground in Laos, they get bothered by like maybe a farmer, you know, tilling his land and he hits a bomby and it explodes. And like a zombie, it's destructive many years after it's been uh, put in the ground. So that's one I wanted to write. And plus, I just love zombies a lot and thought that <laughs> and thought that nobody would want to come to a play called Why, Why Laos Gets Bombed, and thought that maybe if I just put kung fu and zombies and cannibals in there that people would come, and they did. And so it was a great run. Can we give a round of applause for this one? Woo! Congratulations on that. But you're also a writer in another way because you recently launched your rap career. Oh, Lord. Word on the street is you got bars. Yes. So I need to know about this really quick. Is this a thing? <laughs> What's happening? Okay. Um, so I'm not really a rapper, but I play one in theater. Okay. So for the Meng Lao friendship play or La Meng friendship play, uh, Mei Li Yang and I, um, we wanted to talk about language and how as refugee kids growing up in Minnesota and in the public school systems, we were actually coerced to go to English as a second language sessions. Mm. And um, even though our English was perfectly fine, we just kept being put into these classes. And so we wrote a, a rap song about um, having multiple tongues and the advantages of that. And so we wrote a song inspired by Big L, um, Ebonics, which is one of my favorite rappers. And the song's called Refugee Slang. And it's the most prideful, shameful thing I've ever done because I know my actual rapper friends are probably cringing, but I'm really proud of myself for learning my rap lines, I guess, and keeping on beat. So that was good. You should check it out. And where can we see this? Uh, I think you should just YouTube refugee slang and then my miserable face will come up <laughs> and <laughs> check it out. And where can people go to find out more about the work that you do, whether it's your poetry or the plays that you write or you as an actor, where can they find out more in addition to your new rap career? Oh, Lord. Um, so I'm, I t I'm totally looking forward to being on Soul Tools uh, to be interviewed about my new rap career. <laughs> and um, you could follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, RefugeeGenius on Twitter, and then also Saimukta, the RefugeeGenius.com. And I'm on the Facebook, you know, just Google my name. My face pops up sometimes. All right, y'all. Well, she's going to make sure we're going to make sure we get her on Soul Tools Radio so she can take the bar exam just like every other MC. Yeah. But in the meantime, I need y'all to make some noise. <laughs> Fresh. I'm your host, Sonny, and this next young man I'm interviewing has been a two-time American Idol finalist, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You've also been signed to Pitbull's Mr. 305 Entertainment label. Yes, currently I am right now, yeah. Okay, and then you were also featured on the locally produced show and Emmy-nominated Urban Perspectives as a shining star, correct? Yes, I was. That was a great experience. All right, Candy Fresh audience, please give a warm uh, welcome for Chris Lawrence. All right, so I did my Inspector Gadget yesterday. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I did some research on you, okay? Uh -oh. I told you to go easy on me. Huh? Okay, nothing like that, nothing like that. We're gonna keep it nice. All right, all right so I heard you sing on a couple of videos. Okay, okay. And from what I hear, you definitely got some R&B, some bluesiness to your voice. Who who inspired you? Who, what, what genre of music really inspired you to be like, yep, I'm about to be in music? 
Uh, you know, you wouldn't think it, but my sound right now has kind of progressed into what it is. But uh, starting off when I was 13, John Mayer. Actually, uh, I heard his first album, so I picked up the acoustic and I, I learned by ear. I would like play a note, mm -hmm. pause it, and then I figure out what that note was, rewind it, get the next note, and that's kind of how I learned acoustic. So school of hard knocks. Yeah, school of hard knocks, <laughs> you know, trial and error. But um, so you know, I love John Mayer, and then vocally I started getting into Usher and Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. and all that. So I got real soulful, and I, I grew up playing drums in church since I was nine years old. So okay. you know, that gospel side of me comes out a lot in my music. I okay, I can hear that in, in some of the stuff that I saw you uh, playing on your video. So. Moving on to the present. I like to keep my interviews sweet okay, and like simple. That. So we there did the we past, go. let's do the present. Okay. Uh, All right, okay. so on Urban Perspectives, you mentioned how hard it gets uh, on a journey when you're, when you're going towards something, when you're going towards your goal. Yeah. So what's been your biggest motivation to keep you moving? Because nobody sees the really difficult parts of you. Like, you know what, I really don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this. So what is your number one motivation that keeps you going one more day? Um, you know, honestly, uh, there's a lot of different motivators for me. One, it's a big one, is my mother. Okay. Uh, she actually has MS. Um, I've been like taking care of her since I was 15 years old, my dad left. And uh, so one motivator is to be successful so I can really give her the life she deserves, because right now she really doesn't have the life she deserves, in my opinion. Okay. You know, um, also though, when days get tough, you know, and, and the music business is it's rough, you know, mm -hmm. um, you just gotta, you gotta really stay true to the music and love it. You know, I got a tattoo on my arm. It's uh, a combination of sound with the beauty, beauty of form and expression of emotion, and that's the definition of music. So when I get down, I'm just like, hey, you know what? This is what it's all about, anyways. And I think that that's what people—that's the type of music that people really love, anyways. That's from the heart. That's from the music. heart, yeah. Can you give us a little sample? Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is um, a little sample from my single that was released last summer through uh, Mr. 305 Records. It's on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. You can go check it out. Shazam it. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so here it goes. It's called Withdraw. I can't get your love out of my mind You're my favorite habit, gotta have it time after time I might get uneasy when you're leaving Girl, it's an issue for me So I just can't quit you, girl Yo, so give me a hit, lady, give me a hit, baby I'm my face, steady, just eat a little bit, baby Give me a hit, lady, give me a hit, baby I'm my face, steady, just eat a little bit, baby Hey, the nights are so cold Everything's out of place The days grow so long When I cannot see your face I'm so addicted to you And your love, yeah I'm going through it, y'all. Come on, say, oh, I'm going through it, y'all. Sing it, y'all. Oh, I'm going through it, y'all. One more time. Oh, I'm going through it, y'all. Come on, say, oh, I'm going through it, y'all. All right, y'all. Give a big round of applause. I said a sample. You gave me the whole thing. I have to start a choir. Well, I see. Start a I, choir up in here, you know? I, I saw your little hand gesture. You got a little music director in there too. <laughs> yeah, that's that gospel coming. Okay, right? all right. All right. So my last question for you. Actually, I have two questions. Actually. Okay. okay so, uh -huh. outside of music, yeah. what's one thing that you would like to do but you're really, really scared to do? I ain't scared of nothing. I, I, I knew you was gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say that. Just uh, come on. You know, I don't know. Uh, be in a relationship? I don't know. Oh, that's another interview for another day. Yeah, right, you know, so, you know, I don't know. You know, I've already skydived. I've done some stuff, but um, I'm actually, I'll be afraid to do what you're doing. I don't know if I can do what you're doing right now. That's a skill. Give it up for you, y'all. Come on. Thank hey. you. Thank you. That ain't scared, man. You got this. You, 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 you signed the pit bull. You know what you're doing. I'm scared right now. Uh, I'm scared right now. Uh, uh, all right, so the last question is, tell me something sweet and fresh about what you're looking forward to in your future. Uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to sharing uh, the gift that God gave me with, with people who really appreciate it, who need it, you know, uh, spreading some inspiration, just like uh, Bob Marley said, light up the darkness. I, I, I just want to get lost in your love, lost in your love, I said I, I, I just want to lose myself and get lost.
for coming out. Let's give it up one more time for Chris Lawrence. All right. See you. We also want to give a special thanks to Quinn Via Gomez for stopping by, as well as Sai Mukta Mukbangse. And we also want to give a special thank you to fashion head designer, or head fashion designer, Mimi Wynn, as well as Chris Lawrence for his interview. And we also want to say special thank you to DJ Keezy, who was holding down on the ones and twos all night, and for our so sweet Candy Fresh dancers who kept the energy Crazy fresh. Give it up for them. All right. Yeah. I want to thank all the sweet faces in the audience one last time. And this is Candy, Candy Fresh. fresh.